afternoon, hello from Green Island Gardens. It's a beautiful March sunny afternoon. Time for getting on with everything in the garden. But one of the tasks that we've got a little bit behind with this year is pruning the wisteria. I love wisteria. There's something sort of romantic about the, the old fashioned houses in Suffolk. Their painted walls and trained wisteria all along the front, just blooming with those huge long panicles of scented flowers in May. A lot of people see that and instantly go for the, the climbing section and choose a wisteria planted up against their house. And I've seen them become an absolute nightmare because actually they are quite invasive and rampant climbers and wisterias left on their own will climb for absolutely almost the 60, 80 feet without a problem. So I would encourage people not to necessarily plant them against the walls of their house, but instead choose an arbor or pergola, something like this we've got here over the, over the pond, the decking at Green Island, and plant it there where you can keep it carefully uh, under control, or even grow them as a standard, which is how we grow a lot of the wisteria here at Green Island. This one on the arbor um, is actually a white flowering one. It flowers later than the purple one, so end of May, beginning of June. And it looks an absolute picture here in, in the summer. But getting the pruning right is really important because if you buy a wisteria, if it's been grown from seed, it can take 10, 12, or even up to 20 years to start flowering properly. If you, however, prune them properly, as I'm about to show you how to, you can bring forward the start of them prune, uh, flowering to about three to five years, three years if you're lucky. And I'll also show you how to uh, prune one in order to make a standard. But for now, we're going to look at this one here. You can see it's uh, climbing over the, the total of the, of the arbor here. Um, if you're familiar with wisteria, you'll know that in the summer, after they've flowered, they send out masses of long, whippy growths, really uh, vigorous and you suddenly think oh my goodness I'm going to be taken over by this thing in actual fact what you should do is in July go to the plant and all those long whippy growths take out your secateurs count from the place where it's uh, initiated I'll show you one now I just yeah, we've got several on top um, you can see where it started here last year and these are the, what I call the little nodes every little brown shoot here so in the summer, in July, what you want to do is count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then cut off the shoot at that point. So all those long whippy growths, you cut back to seven little nodes. And it still looks a bit uh, disheveled and a bit ungainly at that point. But then what we do is we come back in February, the second month, and each of those shoots, we will cut back to just two nodes. And this uh, encourages the production of flowering spurs, which these are. So you can see, as I said, this is a long one. This has actually been left because we're training uh, the structure of this wisteria to cover the front half of this arbor. So that didn't get cut. But all these ones you can see here, these were all cut back to seven nodes last July. And you can see how they've all budded up, ready to flower. And what we do now is each one, we're going to cut it back to just one, two. So two nodes like that on each one. I'll pick up the bits later. So it's quite time consuming to go right over the whole plant. That's a longer one. And it is also quite tricky up on this arbor. One, two, yeah, to cut it just there. Okay, so that's that little bit done there. So here we've got uh, our standard wisteria. This one is Wisteria sinensis, the Chinese wisteria. Um, it has lovely purple panicles of flowers, beautifully scented in May. Um, this one has been trained, as I said, into a standard. So you can see it's really quite old and gnarled now. Um, and all the long shoots were, were pruned back in July. And as I showed you with the other one, all the shoots that have been pruned to seven nodes in July. And the easy way to remember this 
it's July is the seventh month. So in the seventh month, you prune back to seven nodes. February is the second month. I know it's March now, we're a little bit late, but normally February, second month, so prune back to just two nodes. So if I can find a couple, this one has actually been done in February, but I might find the odd one or two here that we can prune back a little bit. So that one there and that one, for example, just back to two. Uh, and then you can see all these short flowering spurs will just be adorned with beautiful flowers in May. So this one is uh, Wisteria floribunda. This is the Japanese Wisteria. Similar type of long purple panicles of flowers, but they are much longer. So the most um, glamorous, if you like, of the, the species. Um, this one I've planted to grow up a tree and just let it go and you can see it really has gone it's gone right to the top of the it's a cherry tree there you can see all the long whippy growths that grew last July just waving about in the wind with the the ends curled now we obviously we cannot get up there and prune any of that so it's just left to do its thing and that's what a wisteria would do if you plant it up against the house and don't maintain it don't prune it properly it will get in under the gutters go under the roof tiles it will cause all sorts of problems so if you really want to have a, a, a wisteria and allow it to grow to its full potential i'd recommend planting it alongside a tree just water it the first couple of years and attach it until it can get a fixing to the limbs and then it will very soon wrap its, its, itself around everything and be self-supporting so you can see where the original wisteria was planted here about 25 years ago up against the trellis and it's grown up the trellis into the tree as far as it can go it's also grown sideways along rooted itself these old gnarled branches now are the only thing really that's holding the trellis up. You can see it's come right along here and then twisted itself like rope naturally going up into the tree. So we're, now we're in our nursery here, polytunnel stuff still away in case we get late frosts. But the wisteria we have for sale here, um, these ones I've trained um, uh, so that they're ready for people if they want to have a standard wisteria tree. So again, it will encourage them to flower sooner. But you can see how a main stem has been chosen, attached to grow upright as possible. It's then dividing, and then all those whippy growths have been cut back every year in succession. Uh, so it should be ready to produce lots of flowers. Ready-made tree for you there. This one's divided slightly lower down, so you can have a choice. But if you if you select a wisteria yourself, a younger specimen, I would say if you want to have a standard, try and choose one with one main shoot from the bottom. If it has got another, just cut it off at this early stage, and then it will it will stop growing from that point. But support it growing upwards. Cut it back in the way I've shown, and then it will flower for you um, in a couple of years. A rare sit down for two minutes for me in the garden, but an absolute must next to this beautiful Daphne. I can't sit down. The smell is just divine. Daphne Odora, this one. Green leaved version of Daphne Odora Oreo Marginata, which is the more common one. But I absolutely love this one. I think it's just divine. And the scent just hits the visitors as they walk up from the car park. As ever, thank you very much for watching today. Please do let us know if you've enjoyed this more instructional uh, video or where you, whether you prefer the garden walks and looking at the plants more. We're happy to take on comments. If you've got any questions, please send them over. Happy to answer. And last, last but not least, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.